So you want to be a writer? Reflect on your past. So you want to be a writer? Really? Well, me too. Isn't that a coincidence? However, I have no idea how to do it. Sure, I can put pen to paper or fingertips to keyboard, but I actually haven't got a clue about what goes beyond that. Well, maybe I'm lying a little. I've got clues. They just don't make any sense. So let's go on a journey together. A journey of words and imagination and maybe getting some writing done? Yeah, it doesn't look good, does it? Right, we've established a few things. I want to be a writer, and you probably want to be one too. So why haven't I done anything? Why don't I have hundreds of my own books on my shelves? I've been in this world for nearly 25 years. You'd think I would have managed something by now, wouldn't you? It doesn't have to be Dickens or Shakespeare, but you think I would have a bit more to show for myself. The biggest problem I have is I'm lazy. Terribly, terribly lazy and very easily distracted. Oh, look, a pigeon! Nice. I've been told the first step in fixing a problem is admitting it. Let's do it together. Have a little think on your main reason you don't write or finish your work and summarise it in one sentence. Even say it out loud if you want to. Probably best to make sure you're not in a public area first. I can assure you from personal experience that mustering public can get you some strange looks. What? Are you ready? Together now. Three, two, one. I'm terribly lazy and very easily distracted. Now, I hope you did that with me, even if it was only just in your head. If not, then perhaps you'll gain the courage to in time. And if you're laughing at me, good. I'm glad I could brighten your day. I always hear that admitting your problems is the first step to solving them. But I guess that only works if you want to solve them. And I do, but I use them as an excuse. I'm lazy. That's why I haven't done anything today. It's my nature. It's who I am. I almost wear it like a badge of honour, which is pretty disgusting. It's something I need to change because if I'm honest with myself, the real reason why I am as lazy and distracted as I am is because I'm scared. Terrified. I don't want to fail. I know if you don't try, you'll never succeed. But if I don't try, I can always blame my laziness. I can pretend I was meant for greatness. That I could have done it if I'd tried. Maybe better to not try and kid myself than to try and fail, right? The philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre talks about a man in existentialism and humanism who says he could have written a great novel. And Sartre says, but you didn't. You can't say you're a writer if you don't write. What are you trying to say, Sartre? What are you trying to say? One of my favourite examples from Sartre is The Waiter. He describes him as being too much of a waiter. He is too eager to please, a little too perfect. He's play-acting. He's pretending that he is simply an object in the universe. His essence is simply that of the waiter. However, it's obvious to the rest of the world that he's faking it because he believes himself to be something other than his job. He is deceiving himself. Though, as someone who's worked in the catering business, sometimes deceiving yourself is the only way to get through a day. Sartre said that we are free. Completely. And we can't really blame anyone except for ourselves. And that is terrifying. Now... I have always had my issues with Sartre, but I often ponder on that. I am free to mess up my own life. I am free to be miserable. I am free to make things better if I want to. Side note. Though what if someone else's freedom affects our own? Okay, ready for an over a top analogy here? But if someone's holding a gun to my head, my freedom is affected. I don't care if you argue that I simply value my life more than my personal freedom at that point. Because of course I do! If I don't give up my personal freedom then, and I might die. And then I can't make any other choices later. I am under duress. A lot more realistic example would be to compare freedom of someone who was born into a position of wealth and social power to someone who was born into poverty. Choosing to go to higher education and then going through with it is going to be a hell of a lot easier for one of them. But I digress as I usually do. And I am making excuses for myself. I have an odd love-hate relationship with Sartre, so write, write lots and show that French philosopher who's boss. Wait, choosing to write proves him right, doesn't it? But anyway, let's go back from that little tiptoe into philosophy. You want to be a writer, right? Well, right. <laughs> Gosh, these word-based puns don't work so well when I'm reading them out. Or more importantly, allow yourself to write. Allow yourself to not write very well and don't give a damn. So, task of the week time. Reflect on your past. What's stopping you from writing? Is it something that could be easily changed or altered? And what don't you like about your own writing? What do you want to improve? Thank you for listening for this first little episode introduction. Uh, comment below with your answers to the task of the week. I'll try to give you some solutions and go over them in the next video or in their own video if I get enough. And I'll share some of my answers too. 
Hit that like button to ward away writer's block and subscribe if you're new. Don't forget to share this video with anyone you think might enjoy it, maybe having a writing headache of their own, and may the words come quickly and easy to you. Veni TVC. Check out some of our other videos here with examples of writing, or more importantly, of me trying to write a sketch. Maybe a review. Maybe I need some help. Hopefully you'll enjoy them.